What's up, everybody? This is your boy, Tech G, back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Network Plus N10-007 certification. So let's get into it. In this video, you're going to learn about network segmentation, such as VLANs, trunking, tagging and untagging ports, port mirroring, switching loops, spanning tree protocol, power over ethernet and power over ethernet plus DMZs, MAC address tables and ARP tables. Let's talk about a VLAN or a virtual local area network. So a VLAN is any broadcast domain that is partitioned and isolated in a computer network at the data link layer or the OSI layer two. LAN is the abbreviation for local area network. And in this context, virtual refers to the physical object recreated and altered by additional logic. VLANs work by applying tags to network frames and handling these tags in network systems, creating the appearance and functionality of network traffic that is physically on a single network but acts as if it is split between separate networks. In this way, VLANs can keep network applications separate despite being connected to the same physical network and without requiring multiple sets of cabling and networking devices to be deployed. VLANs allow network admins to group hosts together even if the hosts are not directly connected to the same network switch because VLAN membership can be configured through software. This can greatly simplify network design and deployment. Without VLANs, grouping hosts according to their resource needs the labor of relocating nodes or rewiring data links. VLANs allow devices that must be kept separate to share the cabling of a physical network and yet be prevented from directly interacting with one another. This managed sharing yields gains in simplicity, security, traffic management, and economy. So for example, the VLAN can be used to separate traffic within a business based on individual users or groups of users or their roles or based on traffic characteristics. Many internet hosting services use VLANs to separate customers' private zones from one another, allowing each customer servers to be grouped in a single network segment no matter where the individual server is located within the data center and some precautions are needed to prevent traffic escaping from a given VLAN, which is also an exploit that is known as VLAN hopping. Next, let's talk about trunking 802.1Q. So trunking is a technology for providing network access to multiple clients simultaneously by sharing a set of circuits, carriers, channels, or frequencies instead of providing individual circuits or channels for each client. Trunking is a technique used in data communications transmission systems to provide many users with access to a network by sharing multiple lines or frequencies. As the name implies, the system is like a tree with one trunk and many branches. The data transmitted through trunking can be audio, video, controlling signals, or images. Trunking is the mechanism used to form an internetwork or the internet composed of LANs, VLANs, and WANs. The switches are interconnected to establish these networks using trunking, and trunking is not limited to any medium since its main purpose is to maximize the bandwidth available in any type of network. In 802.1Q, this is a VLAN tagging program protocol developed by the IEEE or the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineering. Since it is an open standard, it can be used between switches from different vendors. So if you're trunking between a Cisco switch and a different brand of a switch, you can use 802.1Q for the trunk to work. Let's talk about tagging ports. So VLAN tagging is performed by putting the VLAN ID into a header to identify which network it is present in. This helps in determining which interface or broadcast area the information packet needs to be sent in order to receive the right information. The switches need to be configured beforehand to work properly with the process of VLAN tagging. With this system, multiple broadcast systems can be segregated into individual domains, bridging traffic, can be forwarded with the use of this system and clients and information can be organized, configured and grouped logically. Overall, the functionality of the system will be optimized. An untagged port or access port on a switch connects to hosts. So the host is unaware of any VLAN configuration, which causes the host to send its traffic without any VLAN tag on the frames. When the frames reach the switch port, the switch will add a VLAN tag. The switch port is configured with the VLAN 
an ID that it will put into that tag. Most switch ports will use this mode by default with VLAN ID one. When a frame leaves an untagged port, the switch then strips the VLAN tag from the frame and then the traffic is then forwarded as normal. Let's talk about port mirroring. So port mirroring is used on a network switch to send a copy of network packets seen on one switch port or an entire VLAN to a network monitoring connection or another switch port. This is commonly used for network applications that require monitoring of network traffic, such as intrusion detection systems, passive probe, or real user monitoring technology that is used to support application performance management. Network engineers or administrators use port mirroring to analyze analyze and debug data or diagnose errors on a network. It helps admins keep a close eye on network performance and alerts them when problems occur. It can be used to mirror either inbound or outbound traffic or both on single or multiple interfaces. Next, let's talk about a switching loop. So a switching loop or a bridge loop, this occurs in computer networks when there is more than one layer two path between two endpoints, such as multiple connections between two networks switches are two ports on the same switch that are connected to each other. The loop creates broadcast storms as broadcast and multicast afforded by switches out every port. The switch or switches will repeatedly rebroadcast messages flooding the network. Since the layer two header does not include a time to live field, if a frame is sent into a loop topology, it can loop forever. Let's talk about spanning tree protocol. So the spanning tree protocol is a network protocol that builds a loop free logical topology for ethernet networks. The basic function of STP is to prevent switching loops or bridge loops and the broadcast radiation that results from them. Spanning tree also allows a network design to include backup links providing fault tolerance if an active link fails. As the name suggests, STP creates a spanning tree that characterizes the relationship of nodes within a network of connected layer two bridges and disables those links that are not part of the spanning tree, leaving a single active path between any two network nodes. All right, let's talk about power over ethernet. So power over ethernet is a networking feature that lets ethernet cables supply power to network devices over the existing data connection. Power over ethernet cable devices can be power sourcing equipment, power devices, or a combination. The device that transmits power is a power sourced equipment, while the device that is powered is a power device. Most PSCs are either network switched or PoE injectors intended for use with non PoE switches. Common examples of PDs include voice over IP phones, wireless access points, and IP cameras. Power over Ethernet Plus, this is the update to power over Ethernet. The major difference between PoE and PoE Plus is that PoE Plus power sourcing equipment can provide almost twice as much power over a single Ethernet cable. PoE Plus PSEs can supply power to both PoE and PoE Plus powered devices, but PoE PSEs can only supply power to PoE PDs. Also, Power Over Ethernet Plus powered devices, they require more power than the Power Over Ethernet PSEs can provide. All right, let's talk about the DMZ or the demilitarized zone. So a demilitarized zone, which is also sometimes referred to as a perimeter network or screen subnet. This is a physical or logical subnetwork that contains and exposes an organization's external facing services to an untrusted, usually larger network such as the internet. The purpose of the DMZ is to add an additional layer of security to an organization's LAN to where an external node can access only what is exposed in the DMZ. Z, while the rest of the organization's network is firewalled. The DMZ functions as a small isolated network position between the internet and a private network. And if its design is effective, it allows the organization extra time to detect and address breaches before they would further penetrate into the internal networks. Next, we have a MAC address table. So a MAC address table, sometimes called a content addressable memory table. This is used on ethernet switches to determine where to forward traffic on a LAN. MAC address tables map each port to a MAC address. When a switch receives a frame, it associates the MAC address of the sending devices with the interface on which it was received. The table that stores such associations is known as the MAC address table. This makes it efficient to forward traffic directly 
directly to a host. Without a MAC address table, traffic will be forwarded out each port like a hub. This table is stored in volatile memory, so associations will be erased after the switch is restarted. Let's talk about an ARP table or an ARP table. So an address resolution protocol, this is a communication protocol used for discovering the link layer's address, such as MAC addresses associated with a given internet layer address, typically an IP version 4 address. This mapping is a critical function in the internet protocol suite. An ARP table is simply a method for storing the information discovered through ARP. It is used to record the discovered MAC and IP address pairs of devices connected to a network. ARP allows for pairs of MAC and IP addresses to not have to be discovered or rediscovered for every data packet sent across the network. Once a MAC and IP is learned, it is kept in the ARP table for a specified period of time. All right, so that is my quick little class on network segmentation where we talked about VLANs, trunking, tagging, and untagging ports, port mirroring, switching loops, spanning tree protocol, power over ethernet and power over ethernet plus, DMZs, MAC address tables, and ARP tables. Now, if you felt like you've gotten something valuable out of this information, go ahead and hit the like button, share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Net Plus N10-007 certification. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.